so you can buy a state-of-the-art GPU and make profit. I don't know why right. there's an inefficiency in the market. I, okay, so I do think that there's a... Are we, are we sure this is being syndicated and everything? Is this live and everything right now? I don't know. You're the one streaming it. <laughs> I see it on Twitch. I see everybody. Yeah, I see it. It's okay. there. Are people on Exotica or anything like that? Anybody's talking? We have seven viewers on Exotica. Okay, good. I'd rather them be there than anything. But then you, you manage the yeah. chat thing because I'm, I'm just like keeping tabs on all my other shitty links. Yeah. But no one's coming to those, and that's probably a good thing. <laughs> Um, I should probably take a look at the YouTube chat as well. But I mean, but I don't know. I don't mean. Is we've there had a reason for mining shitcoins? Yes, there is a mine, reason for mining shitcoins. Is there is there a political and practical reason for mining shitcoins? A hundred percent. People can't access Bitcoin. It's a lot easier to mine, you know, hundredths of a cent of whatever shitcoin you're mining, and then exchange it for Doge on some exchange, and then get Bitcoin than it is to actually get Bitcoin with like USD or something like that. If you're in like, yeah. you know, some random place, like maybe Venezuela or like China or something, I don't really know exactly. I mean, those are probably bad examples. And I, I don't really understand how, you know, uh, uh, being poor probably correlates to actually trying to get currency. I'm not, I don't, I can't really speak on that, but I would say it's a lot easier like the trend, like it's yeah. a lot easier to transact. Like if, if no, I, I think it's an interesting point. I think it's maybe you know. I think that you know, even aside from this point, that altcoins do serve a purpose, and they are like a way that Bitcoin has scaled naturally. Um, and I do think that if you're using a shitcoin or any blockchain for you know just a transactional purpose, in other words, you, you're you're going to mine it, you're going to sell it, and you're going to turn it into Bitcoin then you don't need it to be like as secure as Bitcoin because you only need to trust it for the moments while you're putting value in it. And then when you take that value out, you don't have to trust it anymore. So like there's this kind of like uh, intrinsic utility to having a blockchain, even if it's centralized, um, you're just taking a risk by using it because there's no risk though. The technology is already there. I mean, the technology is well, already risk, proven. People the are time just risk, the time risk gets exponential over time, I, I guess. Probably, but yeah, but, for, um, for, but but you're only using it for a few minutes or a few exactly. days, so it's like it, your risk is 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 minimized. Um, and so that does provide utility in that way, and that is kind of a way that Bitcoin does scale. But I think it's like Bitcoin scales as an ecosystem, it's not just the chain, it's everything that happens around it. Bitcoin. So this is this is like my I guess the question I'm kind of getting at. I'm not really going to formulate it correctly right now, but like for me, I don't understand why it has to be Bitcoin. I understand like it has it's been like the longest chain and that's where the most of the development is. But like theoretically, and I guess I mean the argument is that like if something better came along, they just incorporate it into Bitcoin. But like we can see how stagnant the community is. If there is some type of forking of the community where they're like, look, at this is obviously better. We're just going to start working on this. That's not. To me, that's not like an implausibility, and I feel like the like Bitcoin itself is very at risk to that, and we already see that because like you have the facade of all this like these bullshit coins kind of taking that like role already. We're like, hey, look, no, we're better because of this, or we're better because of that, or like it's more feasible to use this for whatever reason. But like, really, they're not. They're kind of scratching the surface at like a larger issue where it's like there there are these like imperfections to Bitcoin that we haven't really tackled yet and maybe they're more difficult to tackle than just you know like making a new altcoin obviously but like it there is a there's a weak spot there's a sensitive area to bitcoin that is vulnerable and will will be probably exploited to some degree and you might see some type of forking or a new coin or something that replaces it in the future because like right now as it is bitcoin doesn't really help everybody the way it was supposed to from my understanding all right so you're saying a lot there oh, yeah um First of all, there is no thing that Bitcoin is supposed to do. Anytime you you say what you think Bitcoin should be doing, you're just projecting what you think it should be doing. You know, in the end, well, then why are people it's, using it's just it? a protocol, and it works exactly at like the sticker says. So if you if it's not working in some way that you don't like, it's not that it, it's failing to perform. It's that maybe it's not the best tool for the job. I'm not saying and, that, but like, okay, but why do I want to like adopt this idea about how Bitcoin works? If it's kind of used in very like skewed ways or ways are kind of can be kind of because, easily manipulative, ma manipulate, manipulated, yeah. like for people's like perspectives. I do think that value in markets does at least partially reflect value that could be in Bitcoin and were it some other way, were it more centralized and provide that efficiency or were it more advanced or further along in development, provide this other efficiency or scaling, whatever. Um, and so I do think that you, you do see 
some of the market being pulled away into altcoins and into other interests uh, for blockchain, etc. But um, I think it's okay because in the end, they're also Bitcoin can only ever be Bitcoin, one the, its own one central aspect as a as a blockchain, and so it can never be an alternative to Bitcoin. You know, <laughs> and this is kind of the concept that. I think a lot of people really don't understand when it comes down to talking about a fork. Like I, I find the whole notion of saying that if if X and Y happen, that now this blockchain is called Bitcoin. Like to me, that's totally ridiculous. I think that Bitcoin is just always going to be this original uh, version of the chain, and it will probably live for a very, very, very long time, even if it becomes unpopular. And I think the only way you actually fork of a coin in the way that people like you know Coinbase and the New York Agreement signers are, are envisioning is by having some way to confidently transfer the actual value that the people put in that chain from one chain to another. And that's not what happens when you fork. You I mean, but, but hold on, you wait, fork, wait, wait. You just make a copy and you hope everybody will use your copy no, instead. No, but you fork all the time with Bitcoin. Like that's like forking is just like a part of the development process. Like it happens all the time. It's just people are, like choose like, okay, no, we're going to fork this way because... No, it doesn't happen all like the time. Like a hard actually, fork in Bitcoin. It hasn't really, it hasn't really happened. Uh, you know, you, you had people... A hard fork in the concept of people like New York Agreement is when when they successfully get everybody to abandon a chain. Yeah, but and there's never been any abandonment of the original chain in Bitcoin. No, but that's okay. But that's saying okay. Look, our technology is better, and look, that's that's a good example of this, really. I mean, look, we I understand why. Like, actually, I don't. Actually, to be is, honest, we'll, we'll have to get into this because I don't really understand I'm what the other is. I'm actually kind of all right. I'm actually kind of agreeing with you because what I'm trying to say is that the only way you have a successful fork really is if everybody decides a different blockchain is worth more. And it, and it might be Bitcoin 2.0, it might be an upgrade or whatever, but in the end, you still have to abandon the old chain and everybody has to choose to revalue the new chain. And the odds are that any time that's actually going to happen in real life is going to be a much more organic process, much more Well, the developers process. have to be behind it. The core than just... If the core it's not developers, even just developers, it's the users that have to be behind it. Well, because they have to swap their, their their software, because they could just stay on the because old software. They have, no, you have to have people that are willing to buy those new bitcoins. I honestly, I don't believe that. Because here's the thing: no, and that doesn't matter. And the price should never matter in any of this. To be honest, like I don't really feel well, like the price should. Uh, the price could the be price what is it is. Exact, but that's is the best measure of how successful everything for, is. It's not measure shit. Like, oh, how is Bitcoin successful for anything? I like, don't know. It's like you're you if me. you're if you're transferring. We're here making TV shows about it. We're here talking. Yeah, but you're transferring. Time. You're generally transferring uh, the wealth. Like the only reason why you're saying this exactly. Like Bitcoin's worth USD. Well, oh my god. You can use it. To, use it to store wealth as well, safely and without you permission. Can, it's a specul. It's without a speculation, and like we're kind of just like the more we talk about it, we can say, hey, look, at Bitcoin's going to go up. It's going to go up. It's going. It's a. It's a restricted <laughs> thing, and it's going to. You know, there's only 21 million of them. So if if you know, eventually yeah, everyone is going to have to use this thing. You're jumping around. You don't man. have there's, to. There's a lot of different concepts you're talking possibly. about. You're talking about the difference between speculation, between you greed, between people using it as sound money. You know, these but, are all. Everybody finds different. But I'm you know, saying that the reason why people it. speculate in Bitcoin is not because of the price; it's because that the technology behind it is very solid. It's because of the development process behind it is very solid. Yeah, and they know. And a if lot you of have all the develop, yeah, but if you have all the developers of Bitcoin go along and say, "Hey, look! By the way, look at uh, we fucked up, and we need to do this new shit called Quantum Coin because Quantum Coin uses quantum fucking physics, something like that or other. I don't know, like invisible blockchain technology, <laughs> and we're gonna use that now." And so Bitcoin, you can still use that, but like we're gonna just we're gonna develop this shit instead. We're not gonna develop that anymore. People might still yeah. use Bitcoin, but it doesn't. It's gonna Are be you unsafe. Playing the game at all? Remember, not really. you're the one, <laughs> <laughs> you're the one <laughs> streaming, not me, man. Oh, you're trying to catch fish. Part and you're with. That's fish. funny. Uh, <laughs> not really. Play some fishing, man. See if you can um, talk and fish at the same time. It's difficult, man. <laughs> this is real. This is real talk right now. I just like yeah. I have trouble to believe that like there's not going to be a replacement that actually is better. Currently, we don't have that. I'm not saying it that there's happen. anything that's plausible. Uh, like, Bitcoin maximalism, Bitcoin Besides Monero, you know, but uh, minimalism things they they have every extreme has its own flaw, and so I do think that altcoins are okay and they're part of how you know Bitcoin works as an ecosystem. I do think that if we are going to fork 
or in, uh, it will be kind of like what you're talking about, where there would be just be a coin that provides people better services, that does the job better, whatever. Maybe it's more private. Maybe uh, maybe Bitcoin goes private, and because it goes private, uh, it gets up getting attacked more, and that ends up making it less valuable than some other coin that isn't private. There's all kinds of reasons why you know the market itself might value one version of a blockchain more than another. But in the end, the market currently right now is valuing Bitcoin the most, and I think it's with good reason. But I mean, I don't know if the market. It's is... the most secure. It's got the most uh, network effect. It's not what, it's okay, but really it's also hard. the most like it's also the most like inf influenced. It's like the most easily manipulative, ma manipulated. You know what I mean? Like it's not. No, it's the least. That's people literally hold on to the their coins because they think it's going to be useful, and then the price goes up, and then all of a sudden someone releases other coins, and then people realize, wait, there's not really much we can fucking do with. But this, this only gets worse with shit coins, man. Don't don't you know if you're comparing it to other blockchains, keep that in mind. No, I'm not comparing it to other blockchains because what are you I don't it to? I don't really think that any of this stuff really matters currently. I think it's good for certain some things. Like it's really good for certain people to be able to transfer value in a way that they don't have to worry about like the repercussions of whatever transactions they're doing. But like whether or not like the whole like value of that needs to go up, like like we have other alternatives for this. Now whether or not people are gonna accept United States dollars or whatever for it is 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 debatable. But if you have like I said, enough people that are developing for it, well it in might. the end, like, for, you know, Ethereum part is of a the good example of that. idea is that eventually the, you're not gonna sell your bitcoins. You're just gonna be but transacting it, with them. I mean, theoretically, could you not run your business on Ethereum besides the fact that it's kinda not it's not secure? But like it has enough development. No, you know you know why? And because backing. they could they could at any moment decide that Ethereum does not find adult content to be welcome on their network and they could lock me out and lock me out of coins they could decide my coins belong to somebody else you know that's why i won't use ethereum to, i won't you can't build on ethereum okay that, okay, that, okay but I'm, I'm maybe not like the idea of ethereum but like <sighs> ethereum has backing maybe dash okay like whatever maybe zcash like you could you <laughs> I mean, could roll you in could... the end that's kind of the same problem with all of these is you don't really, really want to build build too much on any specific small weak chain that either has you know but you could uh, though one one or two or more aspects of extreme centralization because eventually you're going to have a problem they're going to they're going to censor you so, okay or, let's say oh, litecoin whatever you could do litecoin yeah we could do litecoin why not I'm not saying right that now, like you should, but, 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 but you it's know, possible. And it's, I mean, personally, I, I want bitcoins. What if you found? I'm, what if you found I, out that, that like, I want to? I want to help build the Bitcoin infrastructure. What if you found out like tomorrow, like the price is heavily manipulated in Bitcoin, and that like Litecoin is not actually, like oh, Litecoin. And for some somehow they came out with like a, a scientific analysis, like oh by the way, like our, <laughs> our network is actually super decentralized and our mining is super decentralized. And it's actually more reliable because of this, because X, Y, and Z. Like, would you be like inclined I mean, to all of a sudden like accept what, you're saying Litecoin? What if reality wasn't reality? No, I'm saying that makes your reality okay. I'm saying that like <laughs> I don't I don't really understand the Bitcoin story the way that like I feel like I should, and I feel like it is a heavily tainted like thing. Whether or not it's the most reliable currency, I'm not debating that. Or whether it's not the most you, everybody like, in Bitcoin loves their conspiracy theories. I'm not. The I'm, end, I don't even think it's really conspiracy no. theory. I just think that like it's kind of obvious. Manipulation is a conspiracy theory. You don't know. You can you can't prove it, and you can't know it unless you're the person doing it. I don't know. Whatever, <laughs> may, whatever, maybe. I just I don't really think that like B Bitcoin is like is like sacred and like totally like immune to like being tainted. Like it's it's not decentralized in the sense that like the people developing it and the people that have been developing it for a very long time it may be influencing be the development of the coin in ways that we might not be noticing over long long periods of time that we don't really pay attention to because we're not that you're not, keen you're not to the wrong idea. At all. And it's happened before. Like yeah, had, one segue's a great had, idea. Uh, great point. Like with with like no, with Bitman. Not well, I'm talking about like you know Mike Hearn used to be somebody that contributed, and he ended up being able to get a significant bug that did almost cause a Bitcoin fork. And all the miners and everybody had to get together in IRC and coordinate to make sure the right chain was the, the longest work and to keep everybody you know where they were supposed to be. All because of some developer that put something in. So it, it is possible for you know, core devs to get stuff in that is bad for Bitcoin. And we are having to trust the great majority of people in Bitcoin and everywhere that, that touch this are having to trust reputations of people that actually know how the programming works and et cetera. In the end, most of us can't read a lick of it. Most of us can't, even if we could, wouldn't feel confident enough to say that it was safe or, you know, 
didn't have some kind of exploit. You really that and and I don't know whether this is good or bad, but you really do need people that know how to do this stuff. Yeah, being the guardians of it, but then you but you do have to trust them. They Honestly, like this is this is a power. this is a point for like banks. Like there is the centralization thing kind of makes sense. Like they're held accountable for the process that they do. Maybe some of this shit's still crooked, and maybe there's some like you know like like you know ill intent going on behind closed doors as far as the banking process goes but those people are held accountable you can't hold open source developers accountable accountable for like the the way that they're developing technology and if you don't really understand what's going on in those back channels the back but irc if, but channels but that's the price you have to pay because you understand if you could you don't have to pay that price this this wouldn't be possible what if i want my what if i want my blockchain technology to be run by the government because I, because of this exact reason, I'm not saying that this is something that's going to happen. But maybe you know, I, I, this is an argument. It's not, an, it's not, not an argument. Blo- but you don't need it. You don't need a blockchain to, for the government to run it. They can track it for you. They can run their own hashing database. What they if I need, want? What if I want the development team to be accountable for how the technology? Maybe it still should be open source. But the main yeah. people that are like then you don't want linked Bitcoin to the GitHub. That. That's what I'm saying. Maybe yeah, I don't you, want Bitcoin. Maybe I don't feel maybe that it's don't. comfortable. Maybe, maybe, maybe exactly. That's my point. Maybe I, and that's what I'm saying. I think a but lot you, of people but, actually but don't actually want you, Bitcoin. They just think that they need it. Like, who the fuck really have... wants Bitcoin? Like, why the fuck do I want Bitcoin? I why do I want fucking money on my computer? You want Bitcoin because you can have. Money I want United States dollars. I want that fucking grain. Yeah. I want the kashish. And yeah, maybe Bitcoin's gonna go up in money, and then I get more U.S. dollars in the end run. But maybe fucking Bitcoin crashes tomorrow. Maybe fucking like the or mining the farm, all the miners, and, and you want to run to Romania, and dollars are a pain. In the maybe ass. that's actually more of a possibility <laughs> than any of this. But like you know, maybe Segwit has code in it that blows up fucking ASIC miners. I don't fucking know. Like you know what I mean? Like there's shit in there that like I don't, I'll never know. And like it's just yeah, that's not like necessarily a plausibility, but like it's not actually impossible. It's already kind of happened. Yeah, I don't know, man. I, I mean, I think we know why people Bitcoin, and and I, and I assume you're being a little bit, you know, facetious. Yeah, I'm going to be but, exaggerative. Yeah, <laughs> um, it, it is because they can have money and have total control over it without anybody getting in the way. Um, and I do think that that is extremely valuable. And now being able to do that through the internet and this opens up a lot of possibilities. Um, and I, I do think it's it's still underpriced. It's just, it just will take time and more people getting into it. And I don't think that means that other shit coins, other altcoins, other blockchains can't also be very valuable. I don't think it even means that there won't, might not be one that takes over from Bitcoin. I just think it's pretty unlikely and going to be very difficult. Um, but anything's possible in the future. You don't know. I gotta be honest. So, like, I got into this because I was like, "Oh, I can print money from my computer." But like, the reason why I'm turned off from Bitcoin is because everybody goes, "You shouldn't want Bitcoin because it's free money," and then that's all fucking people are caring about. Like, that's it's like, "Oh, but Bitcoin's gonna go up money. It's gonna be free money." It's like it's like a very hypocritical like argument to me that like you're telling people, yeah. oh, "No, you can't make new well, blockchains." I, I'm but I'm just gonna sit on my fucking money it. and pretend it's like it's worth something, and then it's gonna go up in value, and then tell people to buy it. Yeah, I mean, I don't really pe- hear people saying it as free money. I, I do, I do know plenty of people. Bitcoin buy it originally they is, to go up. Bitcoin's they free money. They want to go up in USD value, but you know, part of that is also because Bitcoin is seems to be working pretty good as a hedge against inflation, and I, I actually think that will be a, a, a major thing about it. I think that you know, the more that governments feel like they need to print money to fix their problems, Bitcoin will just absorb that. And instead of having something that goes down in value, like your house or you know all these other things and, and always having to feel like you need to spend your money, you actually can save with Bitcoin. And over time, it will be like, you know, a counterbalance to inflation. See, that was very interesting. Like, I never really considered that it would be used as like an economic tool against like governments kind of fucking up their own currencies. And it makes sense that's, though, because like you're, as you defend your currency, being a better money, but that's you know, going to change. Not- and I honestly, like, this is something that Tone Vey said, and I, you know, I don't really listen to a lot of these like, Bitcoin podcast and whatnot, I only pick up little pieces and what here and there. But like Tone Vase kind of said this how like you're gonna probably see a fork of Bitcoin or something like that that makes it larger than the twenty one million cap. And like personally, like I, I'd like to see that. I don't think that like I had a fair a fair well, shot it, at, at, at the, the end, original it, I mean Bitcoin. in the end the distribute it doesn't really matter too much how you how many pieces you cut the pie into. It matters how I you want more pie. It matters how much of the pie you have, right? <laughs>
Exactly. <clears throat> but no, but all, it, it matters how much of the entire pie you have. Yeah, exactly. That, it doesn't matter how much you have, but of the entire. Yeah, I see what you're saying. So let's let's shift a little bit. We let's talk about these. You know, we we said we're talking about forks, forkers, and fishing. I have um, a lot of questions, we, actually. We talked a little bit about altcoins as a concept, and in a way, those are forks. But Do you not, have notes? Not the kind of forks. To? No. No. Okay. Um, but I, I'm just recalling some conversations we mm-hmm. had and what was interesting. Um, and what's going on right now, which is like we have these fucking airdrop forks like Bitcoin Cash, Bitcoin Gold, and now Segwit2x happening like in a couple weeks or less. Um, you know, from your perspective in the Bitcoin world, what do you think about this? How is this affecting you? So, OK, can we backtrack a little bit and then like maybe sure, this will sure. help formulate this answer. But so like what is the NYA agreement? What the fuck were they talking about? What's the New York agreement? So... Going back a few years now, there have been like a uh, subsector of Bitcoiners, primarily uh, Bitcoin CEOs of companies that are basically providing some sort of centralized service around Bitcoin, like Coinbase, uh, BitPay, you know, as well as a few different developers and pundits like Roger Ver, uh, you know, uh, Mike and Mike Hearn was very early in this but also Gavin and Jeff Garzik being the primary one now. Uh, over time, they all tried various things to get us to increase the block size. They had Bitcoin Classic, Bitcoin Unlimited, all these like fork attempts mm-hmm. of, the, of the code, but they never really got anything more than like nodes off the ground. They never got people to mine it. They never got an actual fork to happen. You know, they never got, they never issued an actual coin. And then finally we had, you know, we had SegWit which SegWit is a really good technology that helps Bitcoin scaling in a layered way, which is, in my opinion, the way to, the proper way to do it. It, it, keeps, it keeps the core of Bitcoin you know, more efficient and less prone to centralization and allows things to build, pe- to build things on top of it. Um, and SegWit, for whatever reason, was, was uh, the way they chose to have it activated in Bitcoin required the miners basically to cooperate. And the miners, for whatever reason, would not cooperate. They would, they would just did not want to let SegWit come through. Um, there are various speculations as to why um, the miners wouldn't allow this. Uh, one popular one is there's like kind of an exploit in Bitcoin mining, uh, which was dubbed ASIC boost, which gives people with, the, with a, certain, a certain advantage in mining if they have implemented in their chips and this provided a great deal more profit for the people using this than the miners not using this which essentially means taking money away from others so wait oh wait wait so this this is what i was talking about so this is this is is a long story i'm I'm trying to give you the whole string but this is this is really important i I want to i really want to understand this so this has to do with bitmain right and so they say basically the asic boost works with segwit ASIC boost is supposedly doesn't work with SegWit, or it might just be. There's two ways to do ASIC boost: it's covert and overt. Uh, covert would be so you can do it and nobody notices. Overt would be you can do it but everybody will notice. I don't know if I don't recall whether or not SegWit blocks overt, but I'm pretty sure because of fixing transaction malleability, which was a, which is another thing. It basically serializes transactions so you can rely on them always being identifiable the same way. Um, because of the it, Bitcoin didn't have that is partly what allowed this exploit. And everybody listening, you know, go go verify what I'm saying because I don't know all the details. I don't know everything about Bitcoin, but this is the general gist of it. Um, but anyway, so miners may have been blocking it because they had this advantage, and and mining is too centralized. So too many of the miners had this advantage, yeah. and maybe they were maybe they were blocking segment and didn't want it because of that. Another argument is that some miners feel that the second layer will make transactions too cheap because it does use the space more efficiently. But this argument is kind of counterintuitive if they're also wanting bigger blocks because that will have this, that will have a similar effect, though not as good. Um, in the end, everybody wanted SegWit but the miners. So uh, the corporations, they want Bitcoin to be able to have more transaction capacity, you know, for whatever reason. My theory is that they have investors and, the, and in order to get more investment money, they have to be able to promise more and more throughput. And if, if Bitcoin literally mathematically can't support the throughput they need to pitch to these people, then they can't get the money. <laughs> um, so they want Bitcoin to be a really major network. And so these guys kind of ended up meeting with these miners that didn't want SegWit and making an agreement. 
um, you know, a very small, maybe 30 representatives of businesses and miners. Um, no, like, you know, no, no developers supporting it. No, no support from anywhere except specifically these CEOs and these miners. And they decided, well, let's do a truce. Let's activate SegWit. And if we activate, and if we activate SegWit, we'll agree to a hard fork that also changes the block size to two megabytes which effectively is actually a lot more. Um, I think it's around roughly eight effectively when you have SegWit and the two megabytes. Um, so it becomes a much more, uh, a much larger consideration because it, the, the, more, the more overhead you put on running a node, the more you cause centralization. So you could just make things worse and worse. This is why we want layered scaling instead of increasing the block size. Okay, so I guess repeat this one last. I think I understood you, but this is seems to be pretty like important. So like when you have a larger block size, it, it, it centralizes the blockchain more so because you're more reliant on the single node to calculate those transactions? Um, it's that it co if you increase the cost of a node. And so when you increase the block size, you don't just like, it doesn't just take more hard drive space. It increases bandwidth usage. It increases um, total resource usage on whatever server you're running as a business as well. Like for example, with Exotica, um, right now we run Bitcoin on the same, we, we can run Bitcoin on the same server as the, as the whole entire platform. And Bitcoin uh -huh. uses way more resources. But if we have to do SegWit2x, we're, we're probably gonna have to get an additional server. So that means that you can only, you have to be a business that can afford to have two servers. To have a Bitcoin business, you should probably you know I mean? have multiple servers. So automatically, <laughs> that so but, but you understand what I'm saying. My, my point yeah, yeah, here yeah, yeah. is that you increase overhead costs. That means that businesses have to be bigger to do this, um, and so now you become more centralized. And this effect ripples and get and it kind of gets worse and worse as you go to the top. And I actually think it's already we already have a centralization issue. But if like we can have a few businesses yeah. and a few miners decide that they want to just fork Bitcoin. Um, and the, this fork is very contentious. You know, the users don't want it. And so if it, it essentially turns the, the, this whole New York agreement, it's, in my opinion, an agreement to release a product. They've all decided that, you know, they're going to activate SegWit on Bitcoin. And as a, and as a counter, uh, as a second step to that, they're going to release a product that also includes SegWit in bigger blocks. And they're going to hope people transfer their value to that product and leave the original Bitcoin chain. I don't even think and it's then, that serious. I think you're overthinking it. I think it's really, because like every time you fork the chain, it's, there's inclination to not mine that chain. I don't know whether it's serious chain. or not, but that is how I see it from a logic stream. I don't think they're going to even take it that far. Maybe, maybe, but like every time you like you fork these chains, you're just making more money out of nowhere. Because like, no, 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 that that money comes from somewhere. Somebody buys those coins. Somebody yeah, yeah. Hold those coins when nobody wants them. Um, there's only going to be so much value transfer on these chains, and you have to remember. These, when you fork, it's saying it seems nice. It seems like free money. It seems like whatever. But when you fork, you now have to, you have to get through all that liquidity of pre-existing coin holders that don't believe in your fork. No, but the so free money have, comes from no the miners. Long, we have no idea how long it will take. No, the free the free money that comes specifically from anybody who buys those coins. That's where it comes from. Well, yeah, yeah, hundred percent. But I mean, that's gonna the it's gonna money, be the worth money. The free money goes to the miners. It doesn't that's, come from yeah. the miners. Well, <laughs> because they get to mine a coin that's overvalued because it has bad hashing algorithms. Yes, they get to do you know they get to do little tricks and make little extra money. Um, causes volatility in Bitcoin, etc. There's all kinds of ways that they can play things if they have these powers. Um, but yeah, you have to, the, the problem with forking is it seems nice because it seems like you're going to steal value from Bitcoin, but you have to remember now you're going to have people selling millions of Bitcoins on your, well, I don't think that they're trying to see years that both they don't believe in your coin or find use in it. I don't think they're trying to steal value. I think they're just trying to create value. Like people, they like, uh, like I think that's what they just New buy York these ICOs and shit because they think it's going to make money down the line. Like why not just buy the fork of Bitcoin because you think brand. it's going to go up in value. Like why not speculate? I think they're trying to parlay the brand and to make free money, but in the end, somebody is. But so the money does come from whoever pays for those coins, you know, on Bitfinex. So, wherever. But that's the same thing with Bitcoin. Yeah, but the thing is, is that Bitcoin actually has network effect and a lot of value and way more liquidity and way more of a, of a stronger ecosystem than any shitcoin will. Even Segwit two X. Segwit two X doesn't. Segwit two X doesn't have developers you can trust, right? 
like think about that we were talking about earlier like how much trust we have to actually have in these guys because we we're not qualified to even vet them and now you want to trust like shady dudes like garzik and if you man you should join the segway 2x mailing list and just look at the representatives and how they speak and the way they interact and the way they like make decisions they're fucking they're the trolls man they're like they're bull they're bully you know they're bullies they're bullheaded they're impossible they're ignorant they say like dumb shit they make they do like bad debate tactics like ad hominem attacks and all kinds of stupid they're just like nowhere near anybody you you put trust in with all your money and so they're not they're, they're going to fail there, there's no other outcome to this the chain may stick around people might mine it and speculators might float it for years but it is not it, this I go to X thing will never be worth as much as Bitcoin. That's crazy though. But like even the fact that it can be, it doesn't matter if it's not worth as much as Bitcoin. Like not, it doesn't matter as long as it can be worth something. It therefore is a competitor, <clears throat> and it doesn't. It like really doesn't matter about the value because sure, the value of Bitcoin doesn't matter either. Like it just matters how much you can as get. As the for market it. matures, that shit will be will, will will float less and less. You know, right now there's a lot of inefficiency. There's a lot of ignorance. But that's only because just, it's it's a shitty a gambling, it's a shitty product. You know? Yeah, it's a shitty product. But something comes along and says, "Hey, look, it, we're actually gonna like really try to fucking fix this whole thing because this shit's not working out right now." They might, but nobody has. Um, I agree, and maybe it's because um, the people that. that haven't haven't done yet have a personal stake in bitcoin and bitcoin's very like easily manipulated it's very easily influenced I, everything else is more easily manipulated so i don't really like that line of argument e okay but no There's but my line of argument is that the they're not like bitcoin's no better than everything else is my argument well you, you, you kind of agree with that, that the only way you can make that argument is if you're comparing it to like fiat and then you're saying, yes. oh, yeah, I can use my credit card. I can do chargebacks. Yeah, I am comparing to fiat. I can get a new one. These are all, there are so many great conveniences that centralization provides. Yes. Bitcoin isn't trying, Bitcoin isn't and shouldn't try to replace that. It should try to provide whatever, you know, utility it can through being what the, exactly what those things aren't being so decentralized so we were talking about this other day because like i was saying that bitcoin should be paypal and you're like no bitcoin shouldn't be paypal no and, and i explained to you why and you understood i think right i almost forgot i forgot though so <laughs> <laughs> i mean it's, it's basically what we're already talking about you know paypal just from a strict efficiency aspect bitcoin has a lot of redundancy so anything let's just for the for argument, I'll just say everything that PayPal has to do, Bitcoin has to do a thousand times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, it, how could it ever be as cheap as PayPal or as efficient as PayPal? And and especially if it has to do everything redundantly, it has to have a bunch of, you know, you have to check verify transactions with your own node. You have to have mining. You have proof of work. You have all this stuff built around making Bitcoin work. That's good. That literally makes it expensive and the redundancy aspect is just fundamentally something you can never overcome it's always going to have to do something more times than paypal has. so it's always going to be more secure and more expensive and that's the whole point okay yeah i guess that makes sense so you just have to keep it like that in that way like this is not fees, for that it's i want bitcoin fees to be as cheap as possible but i also i also think that bitcoin fees will never exceed what people are willing to pay to send bitcoins so I'm not really worried about it either, you know? Uh, that's interesting, though. I don't know. I feel like people get burned then. I don't, I, I don't know if that resentment is well, good know, for the well, community. It's like, well, it, it, this supports your argument also. Because what happens is if the Bitcoin fees do get too high and the market doesn't correct, yeah. people will just move to use other coins to transact because it, the fees yes. will be cheaper. And then the market will correct. You know, Then Bitcoin will say, well... You know, SegWit will get activated. Or the thing is, the problem with this New York agreement is all the people that are making arguments to do this, they're not really making a good faith effort of, a, of a justifying or quantifying, you know, how this actually makes Bitcoin better and how it doesn't affect things negatively. They're just saying, we want it. We're compromising. We want you to compromise. You, you have no choice. We're going to call our thing Bitcoin as if we have any excuse to be able to do so. Um, but it's not Bitcoin. It's facsimile. Anyway. Okay. I think I, I, well, I guess that, I don't know. I, to me, it's just that I feel, I guess, I guess I voice these, these opinions, just that I don't feel that the community is as intrinsic as, uh, I mean, is as, uh, as, uh, 
altruistic as possible. You know what I mean? Like they're not really, they're not really necessarily looking out for the community as much as themselves, the developers. Some are, some aren't, you know, um, every, there are definitely a lot of different types of people in Bitcoin. A lot of them just out to make a buck. A lot of them are out to scam. Um, uh, yeah. And I, I, would, I feel that them, like, a lot of them only love it because money, it, it's not, you know, ridiculous notion. I feel like a lot of the people that say that they're not out to scam sometimes do blame the other people of scamming, whereas they're actually either they just don't realize they were scamming also. Well, Bitcoin does have a weird effect of like turning into a hypocrite if you're not careful. Like, yeah. It, you really have to always be working with Bitcoin and not trying to exploit Bitcoin. The minute you start like projecting what you think something should be or you start saying Bitcoin has a plan or that it's supposed to be a certain way, you probably end up giving yourself more trouble than you're giving Bitcoin. But that's, I mean, but that just, to me, it's like, if you have a certain idea, like we understand what's good about Bitcoin and we, what we want it to do. And we also, I feel like we do understand to some degree what's bad about it. And there's probably, I don't know if there's other ways to go about fixing it. Maybe, maybe this, there's not other ways what's to go fixing it. What's bad about Bitcoin? Tell me what's bad about Bitcoin. Well, like we said, like it's not PayPal. Like if you could have be PayPal and also super redundant, it would be better. Okay, so that's what they're attempting to do. Yeah, that's that. That was the whole. Yeah, the, like Segwit literally provides ability for exponential scaling. Like you can start layering on late lightning networks. And have you read about lightning network at all? I don't really understand even exactly what Segwit it's, does it, or any of this shit. Segregated witness. I don't really understand what that. I mean, means. It, it'll be too in the weeds, and I'm an expert on it either but essentially lightning network it provides an ability to have uh, transactions that happen off of the chain but are still secured by the chain and still verifiable so you can kind of do get into this like super state or hyper state whatever the term is of transactions go you know like for example we could have it so everybody using exotica was tipping each other and it was all verifiable on the chain and that exotica didn't have custody of these 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 uh, bitcoins to be able to steal them from our customers um you could oh, do all your tipping the model could get all the tips and the model could and then they could settle out they could leave the lightning channel go back to bitcoin and settle everything all at once and all those transactions that happened were still on the blockchain but not on the blockchain you understand and so they, there's they provide certain privacy aspects so then what hmm. um they it doesn't really matter know, okay yeah but the thing is, is that this comes at an extra cost when you compare it to a centralized, like, like the way we do it now. The way we do it now is you put the Bitcoins into our Bitcoin wallet. We allocate them to your account as a centralized database tokens, yeah. and you tip them that way, and then we reallocate when people withdraw when they make profits. Yeah, there's one wallet, and, and then it, you have a secret only, But it's all one wallet. You know, It's all centralized, and we could, we could, we could quote-unquote take the money and run if we wanted. But if we, but so in order to have the added uh, functionality of Lightning and the added functionality of having all these transactions be verifiable on the chain, even in this like uh, super state, uh, you're going to pay more than you would pay if you didn't do it. Um, but you will pay a lot less than you would pay if you did it on the chain now. Does that make sense? No, repeat that one more time. <laughs> it's always going to be more expensive than being like PayPal or being centralized. Like the way we do Exotica now, managing we manage people's allocations in a database. Yeah. But if you if if we have to change that to Lightning, there's still going to be an added cost because you still are getting the benefit of the network. It's not may not necessarily be a cost that we charge you. It'll be just be that there, that these fees, these transactions will ultimately have some cost. And there, there's the cost of providing this channel, and so it'll be more expensive than what we're doing now. But Lightning transactions will be super, uh, much much less expensive than the than if you just send a normal Bitcoin coin transaction. So I that's mean, why theoretically we, you could do what we you want do with Coinbase method, because we want the scaling method because we want people to be able to do more transactions that are verifiable because we want people to be able to do low fee things. It enables more use cases for Bitcoin. But like, why couldn't you just use a service like Coinbase? Like, Coinbase is basically just a database that has one or two, maybe ten wallets. Because Coinbase know, but... will close your account if you send the wrong bitcoins to it. Exactly. Okay. So okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so that's just the central. So you're just worried about yeah. Okay. The traffic you're getting. It's more about so Lightning allows you know 
it allows exponential scaling in a way, and you can just keep daisy chaining these kind of scaling methods. And they have side chains, and you know, and, and if you use the, these and New York agreement companies, they're saying they want to do this to scale. They're saying that like core developers have been blocking scaling by not letting us fork, but really. They're not even implementing SegWit, man. Like the only like 10% of transactions or something are SegWit transactions right now. And the fees are so much cheaper. So they're like literally being hypocrites. They're wasting all their time doing agreements and shit when they could just be implementing SegWit across all of their products and be saving all kinds of money and having cheaper transactions mm, right now. But that would like seize their argument. So then like, why do that? Cause then they can't. Maybe that's why, I don't know, but mm. they're, it's certainly shitty, right? Yeah. Okay. So, so seg so MYA is Segwit two X. Yes. And then Bitcoin Cash is just fucking random shit that Roger Ver made up. Kind of. What happened? What happened? So I was trying to tell the his this this history right of talking about how Bitmain was blocking Segwit, and that's how that led to the New York Agreement. Okay. Well, somewhere somewhere in there, um, came UASF, and UASF was Bitcoin's way of recognizing that uh, relying on the miners to activate SegWit wasn't going to work and recognizing that users actually wanted SegWit even though miners wouldn't give it to them and that they were going to win. So they, they basically made it so on a certain date, if miners didn't signal SegWit and support for SegWit, uh, if they didn't act, they essentially activate it, that they would just ignore the blocks that miners were submitting. And this really made it like this really helped people understand and redefine the, the actual relationship between miners and the network. Because previously, a lot of people thought that it was miners that got to decide, and miners that had control, and hash power that has control. People in the New York agreement still believe this, um, for the most part. But really, it's the users that have control because it's the users that hold and it's the users that buy, and it's miners acting like service providers. They're they're basically creating and selling blocks, um, and it's nodes that are the, the consumers. They want, they're the ones that want these blocks. They want to be able to verify their transaction. And the this is going over my head a bit. <laughs> the miners are paid for the service. They get block rewards, they get transaction fees. They're paid for what they do. They don't, they're not actual people that get to decide what bring, where Bitcoin's value comes from. That's the users. So anyway, the users wanted SegWit. They made UASF version of Bitcoin. And this kind of was like a, it forced the miners basically to have to activate SegWit. But they, but what happened was the New York agreement came right at the kind of crux of this, and they tried to like make it seem like the New York agreement is what activated Segwit. Oh. They didn't want, they didn't want, they didn't yeah, want the UASF to cause it. They didn't want it to cause a chain split. They were really worried it was going to cause a chain split and it was going to be te you know problems. But really, all that happened was it was the perfect tool, and it caused and it forced miners to activate Segwit, even if they want to say that. New York agreement helped or whatever it, 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 it still happened the way it happened and because when when UASF was kind of came out the miners like made this like blog post saying oh if if UASF does this and you know there's a chain split then we're just going to make a real fork and this and we're going to release our they just like warned everybody that they were going to make a real fork and this is ultimately what turned into Bitcoin cash you know even though Segwit, the New York agreement did happen and the miners did activate Segwit under the, whether it was, you know, reality or under the guise of the New York agreement, they still decided to do the fork anyway. So that was Bitcoin Cash. And Bitcoin Cash is just, you know, Roger Ver coin, basically. It's Ver and Jahan trying to get people to buy into their scam. Allegedly. And, and, and liberate them from their, their, from their Bitcoins. Okay, so, uh, and they're succeeding at that. Like, the more that they mine the Bitcoin cash, which is apparently right now more valuable than uh, Bitcoin as far as mining goes, like, you'll make more money per electricity spent than you will on Bitcoin. Yeah, I mean, that all depends on who's buying it. If it's just Roger Ver buying it, he's going to run out of money eventually, right? Um, they need actual buyers. That's true. Yeah, that's true. But if he's probably not the one buying it. I mean, they're probably converting. Uh, I mean, they also, that probably also exists still in I mean, Bitcoin, it, it too. Isn't like Bitcoin still... It isn't Bitcoin buying. We all call it 
throw their Bitcoin Cash. Yeah, there are some traders speculating on shit, but Bitcoin Cash does not have like a user market, a, a, a deep market of people that just want to buy Bitcoin Cash and, and hold it and buy Bitcoin Cash and spend it and use it for anonymity or whatever purpose or any any purpose. I just okay. don't think it's really there. Everybody wants has holds in Bitcoin. Have okay. It, you know. So whoever's buying it right now is just complete retards. Potentially, yeah. I mean, there's going to be pumps. Play the waves like any trader, you'll do okay. But most people are going to, you know, most people don't win when they trade. So you're just funding the, the upper 10% of traders or whatever, probably 20%. And 80% of them are funding the gains. So it's not, it's still gambling for most people. Okay. Unless you're a professional. Unless you're a professional like me. Uh... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. Okay. So Bitcoin Cash is just uh, the miners going, "Hey, look at, um, we have power in this whole thing, and this is what we can do." Yeah, it's a miner coin, and you know, I can make arguments. I've I've mentioned before on shows there are some arguments to why miners might do this. Like, they're they're making they're also the guys making these chips and making these mining machines, and so yeah, exactly. Uh, they have incentive to have a deep market for SHA-256 mining. And now, and for some reason, there was never really popular coins that you could mine using the same hash algorithm as Bitcoin. Everybody always wanted to differentiate, and which I always thought was a little bit funny because it's like, oh, we want to be incompatible with the most used mining algorithm, <laughs> you know? <laughs> um, and, and But they wanted to differentiate. They wanted people, you know, to be able to attract other miners that weren't already interested in Bitcoin. Um, and now there's coins that people can mine. They'll, there's going to be Bitcoin Cash that you can mine with the same miners. There's going to be, you know, Segwit 2x that you can mine. And there there will be inefficiencies in those markets and the difficulty. So miners will be able to, to shave some cream by hopping back and forth between these Bitcoins. I feel like you're going to see these forks correlate with uh, the developmental efforts of these ASIC companies, realizing that they can't make chips that are either... Uh, like using less electricity or more powerful than the ones they already have. Yeah, I mean, I don't. So like, I'm you'll, sure you'll there see will be forks, bottlenecks in the efficiency game, you know. Like next but year, right you'll now, probably see new ASICs, whereas this year is like, fuck, we can't make new ASICs that are really going to be cost effective yet because the development just costs too much. So let's just fucking make a fork. Let's just like yeah, put I mean, money in forking. Know. I don't know. I don't know that much about. I know that there will be bottlenecks in technology advancement, and if it, you know, we're at one right now, which is interesting. So, and we're at, there's a lot of problems with solid state technology. Like right now, solid state technology is very, very expensive, which is another reason why like these graphics cards are kind of interesting, and maybe even a, maybe there might be an argument why it's a more secure form of mining, just because like there is a very heavy. How funny is it that like you know cryptocurrency has become something that affects the stock value of AMD and Nvidia? It's well, so I don't know if that's necessarily. People are arguing that it's not the mining because it's really not even that much. It's more so the um, the, the SSD prices, which yeah. uses it's it's they use the same shit, but it's really SSDs that are driving up the market, not uh, the memory, which is what the graphics cards use. Oh no, I just mean that in general, cryptocurrency enthusiasts and miners have have uh, significantly affected the bottom line of companies like AMD. Uh, I don't know. Like you, you, there are, yeah, there are like articles and shit where they talk about like, you know, if there's a downturn in cryptocurrency mining interest, it would affect their sales. And AMD and know. Intel are coming out and saying that? I don't know about Intel, but I'm pretty sure AMD. I'd be surprised um, to see any publication that actually says that from like directly from Lisa Sue, whatever her name is, it says, "Oh yeah, we're our company's heavily influenced by the mining." Like I know it's something they're making. They, they're making a lot of money off. Of course, but I doubt that they would come out and say that. I don't think any of these companies they would acknowledge that it's an aspect of their market. Of course, they would. They 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 have shareholders. They have to answer to them. All it takes is somebody asking the question. Maybe. Because then, I mean, because then you're talking about two separate things now. Are we making graphics cards or are we making mining machines? They're making both now, aren't they? Who AMD? AMD and now Nvidia wants to make. Aren't they making ones that's mining specific? It's not mining specific. So it's literally there's a problem with the GDDX five GDD GDDR five X and GDDR five. The X has a latency issue, which is bad for mining, whereas it's good for things like VR in some instances. 
So what they did is this year they released basically. I could swear I read articles talking about Nvidia specifically making units for mining. This is this or, is the, it's, it's the 1070 Ti. Nvidia. It's the 1070 Ti that it came out recently. It's basically a 1080. It's the same chip. It's a little bit smaller than a 1080 chip, but it has the same memory as a 1070. If you compare mining of a 1070 and a 1080, which costs about two hundred dollars more expensive. They mine pretty much about the same, so it doesn't make any sense why you do that. But the 1070 has a smaller chip on it by default. So what they did is just put a 1080 chip in with the 1070 memory, and that's what they released this yeah. year. So it's it's not necessarily it's actually really good for gaming too. It's a great graphics card all around. It's a really good price. It's great for it's fucking great. Nvidia is like on top of their shit right now. But also so Intel and AMD just came out with a new. They're I think I don't know if they made this announcement, but I kept seeing it all over fucking like MSNBC that. Uh, Intel and AMD are going to do some shit. And this was leaked a couple months ago, too, that Intel was going to do something with Vega. So, See, look, look at that link I just gave you. Where is it? AMD CEO sees leveling off in cryptocurrency mining demand. Okay. So you literally have the CEO commenting on cryptocurrency mining demand. This is from Coindesk. Okay. All right. Lisa Sue. All right. That's, that's basically what I asked for. When did this come out? October 20th. This is fairly recent, too. I, yeah, I haven't really heard her say anything. In terms of headwinds, we're also predicting that there will be some leveling off of the cryptocurrency. I wonder why she says that. Yeah, so look, so somebody in the Exotica chat is saying, um, there are specific mining cards. They don't have display ports. So they're, they're, they're specifically making GPUs for processing. Wait, wait, wait. Yeah, but that's not, that's not for mining. That's for server uh, video card shit. That's just... If you're doing, if you're making like a fucking Pixar movie, that's what you use. Maybe I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, unless I mean, there's no like, if they, if someone can link, if this doesn't exist, but if someone can link an AMD specific yeah, GPU, I, I, I'd, I'd fucking like, I'd be like, what the fuck? How, how, how do I know I about swear. this? And how come like this isn't news? Because that would be that's All right, different. Here we go. Look, we got a link. Let me see. He's probably talking about not the Vega, but the uh, it's a Ve it's the same shit as the Vega, but new AMD graphics card sells out in minutes amid crypto mining boom. Blah 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 blah. Yeah, the sixty four and the fifty six. Yeah, Vega Vega fifty six. Yeah, those that's that's a consumer GPU. Oh, I took it out of the bait before the fish was hooked. No, I'm not hating on you, bro. And I, I actually don't, I'm not looking at the chat, but I just uh, that's not I don't think no, I'm not you, the guy that's talking on the channel. I just don't think uh, that's accurate what he's saying. He says they are for mining. It even states it in the name of the card itself. What, Vega means mining? No, there's probably some slogan or something. Let me see. There's, I know they have a mining BIOS, but it's not, it's not a mining-specific chip. Like, if it was a mining-specific chip, it would be like an ASIC. Like it would be like this is this is specifically for fucking crypto night, yeah. or this is specifically for fucking. Uh, I'm, Zcash, yeah, Equihash, whatever it's called. Page. All right, so I'm on the page for the Vega. It says experience high performance gaming with Radeon RX Vega and Radeon FreeSync technology. And it has it has it has a mining BIOS. I know that. Like you can actually there's a mining mode on those cards. And in yeah. fact, anybody listening on I here, I mean, all right, fine. So what? Why wouldn't they make it multi-purpose then? The point is, they are definitely directly, you know, catering. The to only them. reason why they're multi. Okay, no, but no, let's backtrack. They are directly monitor. They are directly. No, no, no. no. The only reason yeah, why they're multi-purpose is because of the algorithm that's chosen. And this is my argument against Bitcoin. We don't need to fucking use SHA-256. Just like like you don't need to use any of these algorithms. So the algorithm is chosen at the at the uh, beck and of the developers. Like the only reason why the AMD cards, those specific, those AMD cards are good for specific I mean, things, is because right, those so algorithms are the ones that they're using. Before. I don't think the how algorithm actually matters that much. It matters a hundred percent. A good algorithm, it doesn't matter which one. Even if you change the algorithm, I think it's a waste of time because no matter where, no matter where you have the most value on a blockchain, mine, miners are going to get bigger and bigger and and just figure out the most efficient way to make hardware for that algorithm. No, but that and costs so money. Still, See, this is the thing, though, because, look, you're not going to be able to compete with something like if AMD is producing Vega chips, right, that work for all graphics card processing, mm -hmm. it's going to be very difficult for another company all of a sudden to make a card because they don't have that financial backing that works just for Kryptonite. But you're just moving the centralization problem from Bitmain to AMD. There's or, But you can also... Uh, you don't see, fix I, anything. I, I, you're I, just I, moving it around. 
If you want to fix it, you have to. Somebody's gonna to have to come up with a better with a better design. You can, changing the algorithm. I don't know about that. I because one you have or you already have market. You are, you have at least four people in the market right now that can that can compete with GPUs. You have AMD, you have Intel, you have Nvidia, and now you have Rockchip. Or no, what we what we what, what we really want for centralization with Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies in general is we want people like building new chip chip fabrication facilities in other parts of the world. We want people making mining in machines in other parts of the world. We that's that's where the where we want. I don't think that matters. Things go like I don't want ASICs. Like ASICs it are stupid. It does matter because because China could fucking nuke Bitcoin mining as it stands right now. Good fuck Bitcoin mining. And you know what? It if won't they, kill Bitcoin, if, but look, it would be an. Ex- but we want so as little. Disruption if you, as possible, here's the thing: right? if, you kill, if you kill, if you kill Ethereum mining, everybody still has a GPU they can fucking resell for whatever the hell they want to use it for. If they want, they can go fucking help Gridcoin out with their stupid fucking like calculations on yeah, like bone marrow transplants or whatever. If, if, China killed mining, then Bitcoin would look a lot more like how you want it to look because it, it, all of a sudden people would be able to mine with GPUs. My, no, but my my argument my my argument for one is that ASICs are kind of like like SHA two fifty six in itself is kind of stupid. I would actually argue that Gridcoin is probably the best idea as far as like redeeming a currency for calculations because like there's actually like scientific shit being calculated embedded into the calculation. I, 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 bet you that it's less efficient than specifically hashing for that purpose. I bet you there's something stupid. Well, because, about that. well no, but you could this before. We had prime coin and we had you know, coin. But you can vary. This, if the network that. varies, you can have different miners on it that perform different operations. In fact, with grid coins interesting because you can you, you can assign your graphics card. I think it's stupid because it centralizes basically what's value to what and who uh, what deems value. But I'm just saying that like the idea is better to me than like Bitcoin. Like the idea of actually using useful calculations in hashing a block makes more sense than the random stupid two fifty SHA two fifty six just for no reason. And like let's the buy the fucking idea, best ASICs we can just to my the miss. idea that doing that killing two birds with one stone with hat with hashing is obviously a great idea you know like the, that's but yeah. the but whether or not the implementation of this specific thing you're talking about is is uh a worthy implementation of that idea. No, I I'm not saying. I say. I, I'm, I, I said Bitcoin. I'm making fun of Gridcoin, but also saying it's a good. Like, I think it's a great idea what they're trying to implement. I think Gridcoin itself is not done correctly. Yeah. So it, and no one, it, no it one's going to argue probably, that. It probably, <laughs> ref, it probably reflects that it probably might, might, might not be able to be done correctly. But I think there's something there, and my my point is that like SHA two fifty six, like now you just have a bunch of like you're creating this whole new secondary industry. That like you really could have just solved by changing the algorithm. Like we didn't need ASICs ever. Right, we could have can. just changed the algorithm. And now here's a good point of this: Bitcoin Gold did that. Yeah. And I'm not saying. I'm not doing? saying. Look, but Bitcoin Gold is a piece of shit. Like fucking development process. You can't even like get the node running. I'm. My point is that it's not impossible to do this. No well, one's it making this argument. Fork. No it one's. Does require a fork, as far as I know. They may have yeah, been, you're gonna have to fork it. Pro- yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I don't. I mean, wh- why would they want to do that? You're not gonna find like all the miners in China are not gonna be like, yeah, you know what? That's a good idea. We should actually make it so uh, uh, GTX 1080 Ti's are the best graphing, th- uh, best way well, to mine our shit. It, uh, let's get rid it of the basics. Might still be okay though. I mean, it, it, <laughs> Bitcoin only ever has to be decentralized enough. A blockchain in general, like we talked about in the beginning, only has to be decentralized enough for what you're using it for. Bitcoin, even with the centralization aspect as it stands. It's still the most secure. Anybody um, can mine uh, Bitcoin if it was with the GPU. <laughs> Fucking no yeah. one can mine Bitcoin. This was Satoshi's <laughs> dream, ASICs. right? He wanted one one CPU, one vote. You know. It- I, that look at way, that's look at nice, that's something else but... too. Like we, I, this is more the reason why we should be playing Eve when we when we do this because like Eve has the same issues where it's like you have botting issues, so it's like it kind of like changes the whole mar- economy and everything like that. But yeah, like I I kind of agree with Satoshi on this that like when you try to make when you're making this currency in the first place, the whole like the reasons behind it were like let's make it so like everybody has access, guys. Like let's give everybody a fair shot. And then they're like, well, the yeah, con- that's a great idea. The, let's fucking mine with our grief GPU so nobody else has well, any. <laughs> you know what here's, what we, here's what we here's what we actually learned is that perfect decentralization one it might not even be possible and two it might not even be ideal um and there are you know there are advantages to having pockets of centralization within a network or ecosystem or, or anything like that um and all in my opinion all progress all success begets centralization it probably will be that on some timeline bitcoin becomes 
in some aspects that are too centralized where parts of it or break or, or entirely breaks. Um, I, I think it's a natural phenomenon for things to grow and, you know, and that, that means centralize. <clears throat> so, um, but the concept of it being perfectly decentralized was probably never this one CPU, one vote. Um, and I don't know that we want it. And, 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 I, and I don't know that you, you know, like it's just, you're always going to have efficiencies gained by centralization that will provide advantages over those that are not. Look, I, Even okay, within... I'm, I'm not going to say that it's not fine to have. Like, like if it was one CPU, one vote, then we could, you know, whoever could get the most CPUs, the cheapest ends up being able to have power. Right? My, my, yeah, look, I'm, uh, you could, yeah, exactly. It's the same, it's the same I agree, I agree, right I, agree now, I agree, right? I agree, I agree. But here's the thing though, here's the thing though, like we're, like the, the Bitcoin development isn't being really affected by like nvidia and intel's like shit and maybe that would change if it were the case but like nvidia intel amd well, maybe, all these companies it just let me let me just finish this off like all those companies like action. all those companies like like existed beforehand and they already had like their motives beforehand like all this like this like bitcoin technology if it like adhered to that more so it would be less like bitcoin itself would be less at risk for like manipulation and influence by like itself like de bitcoin development and bitmain development are like very closely linked like we can't like we're we're, we're kind of steering away from this. So like when you say like you know decentralization, there's not much decentralization in Bitcoin development at all when you think about it. Well, like it, it has to like it has to support. Yes, basically, you have two parties. Yes. Like there's the people that use Bitcoin currently, and there's the people that mine Bitcoin. Like those are the two parties you have to kind of like really worry about when you're kind of making these decisions. That's what, that's kind of what you just said. But like you're not if you're really trying to attract new people or people that don't already have access to it, it's not really a fair why playing. Why Why did when did it become? Why, like, how is Bitcoin going to, like, really, like, maintain value if not, if people aren't use it? Because Why is Bitcoin will, rele relevant if people aren't going to, no, no, like, no, no. people there's, besides there's the people that use it already between, don't use it? There's a, there's a big difference between making your goal to have uh, a product or, you know, a service or a network be as useful as possible and in the idea of getting more people to use it. These are way two different concepts to me. And, and I don't think I, I don't like the. I'm idea not trying of to get people to use it. I'm just saying this people is, can this use is, it. This is how Coinbase and these guys are thinking. They're thinking we want to get more people to use this. We want to I, make it compete with. We want to make it cheap. We want to make it centralized. It's not about you don't you can't like say. I'm not trying is. to make it cheap or centralized. I'm just trying to say that like like it doesn't like it's it's already heavily influenced by the like. The industry that is Bitcoin and the development process, which is supposed to be completely separate from okay, Bitcoin, so let me are give linked. You, UASF, the thing that actually probably got SegWit activated, was not something that came from Bitcoin Core developers. It was it was done by an outside party, and people and users adopted it, and and users at cooperated. How do you know that? Make it happen. Who's giving them that information? It's got to be someone who's like deep into the code. You it have to understand was, the, the, it, look, man, the intricacies of like what's going on with like the the, the, the community. Core development doesn't necessarily was. mean like the like the hundred ten people that are like you're, signed you're, you're up. Missing the, you're missing the point, man. It probably was a core developer that made the UASF software. You know, he, and he just probably used a different name, but he okay. didn't do it. He didn't do it within the core framework. He floated it on his own, and it wasn't core developers that got it. You know, implemented. It was users that installed that software and chose to implement it because they wanted fucking Segwit. Because you know? they're told that Segwit's a good way to do it. And it is. You yeah, know, but it's I, also like I, it's also being developed with I, like the, the people, certain people I've, in mind. I've managed to find people that I tr to be able to assess things. You know, to be able, people that are programmers. For example, like the the you know my partner RaoDB. Um, He's a fucking Bitcoin genius, you know, like I know that Shout I can get the real, like, I can, yeah, <laughs> I know that I can get the real skinny on something if I just have him sit down with me and look at it, you know, and, and explain it to me. And, and I, I, I can ask the abstract questions so I understand the concepts and he can justify why, what the real deal is with these things. And it's not, and the real deal isn't always exactly as Core says or isn't always exactly as, you know, as bad as somebody else makes it seem it's just there's always in the end complete truth in the code and he just spits it out that way truth in the code okay so okay so there's a couple things i want to talk about because like truth in the code that to me is a little debatable because like we've already seen instances where it's it, it has been kind of manipulated and other certain people will kind of benefit from that like but it but it did it did it was resilient to it it was resilient it, it but survive. so what exactly so nothing happened so no one this ever, is what i mean by having everything 
decentralized enough. You know, like in other words, there's an advantage to having Bitcoin Core. We get some efficiency out of having a, a cooperative process where people from all over the world can work on Bitcoin and there can be a curation of these submissions to get to make sure that only the best submissions and, and the submissions that everybody wants end up getting put in the actual Git. And then that Git is completely voluntary. You know, whether you install the, the, the version of Bitcoin they float is up to you. And some people have chosen to run alternatives. And if you run one that's incompatible, whether you, then you fork. Okay, so wait, with the SegWit shit and uh, ASIC boost and Bitmain, no one ended up benefiting like more so than anyone else with that situation at any point? Um... The users benefited the most because they got they got upgraded Bitcoin. You know, they, we added new rules to enable. But there's segwit. no specific sect of miners that were mining more efficiently than other miners because of the technology that they were using. Uh, before SegWit, yeah, but, but but after either less or not at all. Um, in the end, the, you know, the the mining manufacturing is very centralized. So even if there aren't, and if, even if there aren't efficiencies that. Uh, in the technology, they they already exploit uh, their monopoly by doing things like they'll print the chips, mine with them for three months, increase the difficulty, put those chips in machines, sell those machines as state of the art. Yeah. And now and now everybody now all the miners they sell to are having to mine at the exactly. higher difficulty that they just created. You're not going to have um, that with like AMD and Intel. I mean, that's like uh, sorry to go back to that, but like that's that that is one of like. That would be an argument for Intel and AMD that, like, you're not going to see yeah. that. You're not going to see them, like, well, sit, oh, we're going to sit on these GPUs because, like, you know, fucking we'll they're going to be worth I mean, more. Bitcoin's, Bitcoin's getting very valuable, and it's becoming, you know, it's been less risky to run, uh, to open up farms. I know people that are opening up farms in Canada and stuff, and they're putting big money into it, and they, they've made money mining, and they feel like they'll continue to be able to do so. I agree. Um, so I, I don't think it, that they're the wrong more to more this think grows, that. eventually AMD and, and these other chip makers will get start making very specific mining ASICs and they will compete because they would, they will be able to make money doing so. But like, I don't think it, no, but that doesn't make any sense though to me because like you're, these, these shit coins don't use specific, How does it not make sense? We're because they're not using seeing, one algorithm. All these shit coins use many different type of algorithms. The reason why the GPUs are good is because they can adapt very quickly. That's only, no, but that's only that because that was the lowest friction way for AMD to get its feet in the water. They, they AMD didn't even have to try. Right, people were people just multi-purposed something they were making for a completely different purpose. They lucked out. Now they got to see access to what that market value is. They're gonna more and more start getting going towards making actual Bitcoin mining specific. Machines. Perhaps I, I will bet you on this. Perhaps I mean, and they, the thing is that like they they have the technology, but like I think you might see some communities be resilient to that. Uh, communities that don't get to decide what people, you know, what's resilient. Or maybe not. Is, maybe not. Maybe there'd be there's more people that want to buy it. If money out there that wants a product, and people make that product, it will sell. That's, maybe. You know. Maybe. I don't know. I, I I would be particularly resilient to it just because I don't see the purpose in ASICs necessarily. Like I don't see the intrinsic purpose in ASICs besides the fact that they're trying to solve hashing algorithms. But I think that that can be solved by changing your algorithm or forking an algorithm every so often. And maybe like that's a bad decision to have, or maybe if you could do it with a software, it could be better. But like I think that like that's a software issue, not a hardware issue. Yeah, I don't know, man. Um, I think that the design of Bitcoin is pretty damn good, and we keep seeing it being resilient to all these like even its weaknesses and its pockets of centralization. It still finds ways to, you know, remind us that it it will do what it needs to do when it has to do it. I, don't, I feel like that's saying like, my look, it, are, honestly, my really my true. version of Mario is really good, and you have to buy like the newest version of the Nintendo to fucking run it. <laughs> no, that's what, that's, <laughs> like, what, that's what that's what the New York Agreement is. They're saying that's what all of them are. They're all that. Yeah, but it's already good. It's already great. That's what it's not. It's not. <laughs> I mean, whatever. I like. I get what you're saying. It it's is, useful. Though, like, Everybody like, can use it. Anybody man, can use it, and you can do so much with it. You can do cheap transactions on Bitcoin right now. You Not can really. Do though. fucking yes, you can. You can do if you use. Segway, if I have no do, money, if I'm a, if do, I'm from Venezuela and I have zero money and I want to put all my money in Bitcoin, I have Exotica, to use Doge. We only use Segwit, and so if you make a deposit, whether it's through Shapeshift from a shitcoin or directly to us, when you make a deposit with us, you only have to use like I don't know, fifteen cents for a fee. 
That's not bad. <clears throat> All that to have the power of Bitcoin, the security of Bitcoin, the permissionlessness of Bitcoin. You just have to fucking get with the program. Yo. And and there are a lot of people that haven't, and it's because it's serving their narrative, like you said. Yeah. Which means they're trying to float a product, and I hope they get in trouble for it. I, I guess maybe what I'm asking may be impossible. It's like I want the I want the. Of course, I think that is the problem. I think that the moral you good want, point. You want the you want like two sides of the pole, you know. I just I don't see what the big fuss is when like it's so clear that like everybody is so easily influenced. Like you don't know shit about like you don't really understand shit about I don't mean this like a personal thing, but like you don't understand like the Bitcoin code, but you're like, yeah, I'm really down with it. It makes a lot of sense. Even though it's not really regulated and fucking you know, fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> fuck but, it up. <laughs> but that that was just that was something I committed to the moment I installed Bitcoin the first time. That's I mean know? that's fine. I'm just it's and I'm not saying that's necessarily even wrong with that, but like I don't know. I just don't know if like I'm going to be the one that says, hey, you know what, man, this Bitcoin thing really is changing the world right now. Because if I want to, like I can do X, Y, and Z. That's, you know, pretty much illegal. But I couldn't do that if I didn't have Bitcoin. Like that's yeah. that's like, I don't know if like that's really like, I want to make my fight like that's, that's worth $8,000 to me. You're buying, you're buying drug money. You're just saying, look at this is this, these people use <laughs> drug money. This is the only the way moment, they can do this. It, and I'm gonna, moment, I'm gonna buy some of it. I'm gonna take some of it away from them. Would you agree that Bitcoin right now is is the most valuable blockchain? I don't know what that fucking means. What does that, that mean? It. What is the, what's what what's is I don't know. What's valuable to you? What what's value like? in the blockchain? I don't know. It what could is be market value? It could be security. It could be decentralization. It could be store of value. It could be all those things. <sighs> I don't know. I don't know how it was originally decided that like, hey man, like I'm gonna put a hit out on this guy and it's shit. I'm gonna give you it's, this. It's and a this really is gonna easy, mean something some one day, actually, right? It's actually a really easy question. It it literally is the. It's all that's that's. It is. I, it's. I mean, it's at the most <laughs> blockchains. Yeah, it's the most valuable. But I don't know necessarily like if I really want to even. I just think give you're it not. That. I, I I just think you're not confident. They're in, all fucking like I worthless. Think, I think you. I think you feel like. I think you feel like. It's, like zero is equal. Is worth the most, and that's not they're, true. They're, yeah, they're worth the most, but I don't know if I'm really down with this. Like, this is worth. Like, this is this is good technology because it's a lot of money. I think you are down with it. If I was down with it, I'd be fucking rolling in it right now, and that's why. And maybe maybe I'm sour. I don't think I'm sour though. Like honestly, if I <laughs> do, I sound sour. Do I maybe? I don't, I'm I don't trying know, to be man. honest. Are, like, are do I sound sour? Did you, did you like? Do you have regrets? I look at I if I honestly like now that I understand a little bit what of what just fucking happened with Forks, I wish I had Bitcoin two months ago. Yeah, obviously. Like everybody fucking does. Like if I had Bitcoin before all these forks and I like knew how to trade how, and all this shit, yeah, I'd be how, fucking how, like how high does Bitcoin have to go before you they decide to hold some? This this has <laughs> all just been a learning experience for me. Like I'm still taking notes. I you know, I'm pretty much a noob when it comes down to this. Like I come to Bitcoin for like a month, I fucking like make some jokes and then I leave for six months and then I come back and like that's it. You know what I mean? Like that's like yeah. that's how much of an involvement I have with it. I don't have any business that relies on Bitcoin, like except for the fucking Monero Peril shit, but like that doesn't like that's not like I'm not that's not gonna change anything in my life. You know what I mean? That's a joke. But for other well, people I understand how if you like you decide something is a joke beforehand, then it's never gonna be more joke i mean it's like i take it seriously but it's not you know i mean no one's i i don't need it's not it's not going to change anybody's life having that material out there you know what i mean like whereas bitcoin can change people's lives i get it like it, you can it's you changed can, everybody's life i mean bitcoin consumes most of the people that are interested in it but you really couldn't you use something like else also technically like people were using other like something could come along and replace it other people were using things that were more but why does that this less, matter so much? Good. Why does this? Why is it so important to you to like convey this message over and over and over? Because I just don't see why that, everybody's that, like. There's big, other things that are more important. People are saying like, oh, I, I'm just not like woed by like, oh, like this shit's worth a lot of money. Now I need to buy it, and like it's just gonna keep going up and up and up because like this drug money's valuable. Like yeah, it's gonna be valuable. Like, but what are you buying a stake into, and why? And I don't understand like the the reasoning well, behind then I think, it for I most think, people. Well, then hopefully our talks will help you understand because I think there's a lot of reasons. And I think that when you when you're an enthusiast and you follow all the news and all the updates and all the goings on of watching Bitcoin grow over the past years, it just becomes more and more obvious that the only thing really to do is just hold them. Like it's like man, this is like 
there's so, so many people that don't understand. And even the people that do think they understand don't even understand. It, we have so much more to grow. And it's so much, this is going to provide such a utility. When I mention things about store of value and I mention, uh, you know, hedging against inflation, and it, there's so much function and, and utility that this is going to provide to people that it's silly to worry about whether you bought, you know, 5% or 10% higher or lower than you could have. It's just but like, like that is that's like kind of being ignorant of like the current situation of things. I, I feel, feel like, way more safe holding bitcoins than I do hold so I'll tell you that. Uh, but you uh, but then holding what you said? Then stocks. Okay, that's fine. Yeah, no, no, I, 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 to some degree, I would understand that. I wouldn't say maybe a stock like Netflix would be a, a good thing, or like maybe a stock like Amazon would necessarily be something comparable. Well, Amazon's but like, really well. A lot, a lot of stuff. Bitcoin, but nowhere near the pace of Bitcoin. Well, yeah, over the last like fucking like two months, but that's no, also two years, man. Like Bitcoin has been on a tear. It was like two hundred fucking bucks like a year ago, or like two, a year no, and a half ago. Was, that was two years ago. Whatever, you know. That's what I'm saying. Though, like before that, it's not. It's not on a tear. It's like it's just like fucking. I'm like, saying that there's a difference between a bubble and just you know continued appreciation. This is the fucking definition of a bubble. <laughs> like no, this no. is the definition. There, there, there will be retraces. Exaggerated but, definition of a bubble. But you're nuts. You're nuts if you think Bitcoin is going to go to a thousand dollars again. I don't know. Maybe I am. I don't know. I mean, know. maybe on maybe on a wick on some panic, you know, dumping from some fork bullshit. Maybe but, you know, and maybe I'll buy um, some then. Maybe honestly, that's not, probably when I buy some. We're not going to spend another year like we did in 2015, where where everybody was just worried if Bitcoin would ever be worth a thousand again. <sighs> I guess. That see, this is like people are like really coming out of it now. They're like, oh man, I feel like I'm like I'm like relieved because Bitcoin's over a thousand now. Like it's like what we all thought it was gonna do. I was so worried about Bitcoin until the value went up, and now I'm not worried about it anymore. Yeah, it's like, and the more the more the value goes up, <sighs> I don't know if that should matter. It does. It, it makes people more feel more safe holding. It allows more liquidity. It allows more savings. But that's just like things. that. Just means like it's, it's just, just more foundation to build on. It's just more of the Ponzi. It's just this Ponzi Ponzi it up right now. Okay. Yeah. I mean, look. One of my my favorite jokes I used to have it in my fucking background for Twitter was I called Bitcoin Ponzi for the people. It is. Um, and and it, the the difference is is that a Ponzi does end up you know. Uh, raping people and and taking the money from new investors and paying it out to old ones and bitcoin in a way has as well but there's no there's no head to this ponzi everybody has the same it's like uh the same risk. I'm re okay i guess and that's they get to choose their level of exposure you know? i'm reluctant to um, say this or to 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 submit that like i think that bitcoin as far as market value goes is probably more easily manipulated than most people in the Bitcoin community would uh, submit. Like I was, I I just what? talked about John with uh, with John this morning about this. Like, because he says tell something. Me one thing that it's more manipulated. What what's that? One more time. What what what, what, what it, like compare it to something? You keep saying it's it's more manipulated than people think, but more manipulated than what? Like, what isn't manipulated? What is manipulated to the next degree that's acceptable for you? I just don't really see where this money's being go or used. So it's like it's easy to just hold on to it. It's so easy to just to have what's wrong with, what's Bitcoin wrong with holding and not, it all be mine and it looks like a it's a lot of people. I can set up an application with, uh, that looks like dollars, I'm trading, you know, you know, ten thousand wallets, and it's really just one computer. So it's not well, difficult to really like simulate. Why? Let me tell Market me transactions this. with Bitcoin specifically why, because it's a digital do you currency. Hold dollars? Why do you want to hold dollars? Why do you want to collect dollars? I don't want to hold any money. I'd rather have the things that I think are going to be useful for me in the future. I'd rather make investments. I'd rather have debt. Let's put it like that. Well, but I can't really have debt in Bitcoin. Bitcoin is, Bitcoin is an investment. I can I could go that. into debt from having Bitcoin, but I can't really have debt in Bitcoin. So there's not really like you don't want you don't want Bitcoin debt. Trust me, you can't That's have it. You, you can't really you don't have want to it. lend Bitcoin, and you don't want to borrow Bitcoin, and you really don't want to short Bitcoin unless you really know what you're doing. I'm just saying though, but like as far as like the world development process goes, like people are making money off of Bitcoin, but it's not like whatever. I mean, maybe it's maybe Bitcoin development is somehow calculated with GDP. I don't know. But like, I don't know if that's really creating wealth or just transferring wealth or whatever. I, I think it will like move wealth will move from other pair. You know, there's only a, uh, the pie is only so big. 
if we're talking about the whole world economy, there's only going to be so much value that goes in certain places. But I do think a lot of it is still going to move to Bitcoin. Um, I think there's a lot more that will move to Bitcoin. I do think it provides a lot of utility. I do so think what do it's you a great, yeah, so you know, let's just get this out then. Like, what do you think is really going to happen? I think we're probably going to see it like hover in this three thousand range, and then probably go back down under a thousand at some point. Three thousand range, wow. we're at seven thousand. I mean, it's going to go back down to that, <laughs> and then like you know, I know, but so it's going to go back down to like three thousand or so to like where it was, and then it's going to go back. It's it's going to be like a slow decline again. I mean, I do some charting, and I could chart it and whatever, and talk about what lows could be, but you know, I think. This has been a long bull run, and I think that it's it's going to take some time for people to capitulate, and, and like we're going to have to break down slowly, kind of like we did in the first time. Like when we when we went to twelve hundred or whatever, we crashed hard, and then we bounced hard, and then we crashed hard, and then we kind of leveled off, and everybody thought, oh, we're in the six hundreds and eight hundreds, everything's going to be okay, and then it just kept falling and falling and falling and falling, and that was really where the capitulation. It was just it kept knocking people in the knees until. And then we took a whole year in the 200s, um, and then finally it recovered. So it, we could see something like that again, especially if there's like a downturn in interest. But it's kind of like a snowballing thing. I have a feeling that it's going to be hard to take away some of this momentum. And I have a feeling that the dips are just not going to be as, what's, as brutal Where's this as momentum coming be. from besides the fact that like the shit just keeps forking and creating value in itself? Like Bitcoin's not doing anything. The, the only thing that's happening it, with Bitcoin is that people are having problems with it, and then people the are like worse, doing stupid shit the, on top of it. The funny thing is, is that there are certain like things about its actual like market cap and its actual ability to hold value that open new opportunities the higher it goes. But like the For reason example, why it's going up now, now, now is that, because now it's, it's popular billion, talk about it. Now that it's at a hundred billion market cap, it uh, it makes it um, something that certain investment. Uh, level companies can invest in where they couldn't before. Now that it's has it's worth as much and has got as much attention as it has in the past years, you have like futures exchanges listing futures for it coming out in the next month or two or whatever. And these are major things that affect the market and the and the, and the market market's ability to get get exposure to Bitcoin where they couldn't before. And so that's when I when I say there's a lot of money still to be put into it, there's a lot of value still to be into it. That's kind of what I mean. Is the more the bigger it grows. The more people rely on its value, the the more opportunities will present people to rely on it even more. It's and that's the whole reason why you want it to be something really streamlined, and you don't want it to be centralized. You want it to be something people really build on, but be still resilient at the same time. Uh. I don't know. You don't buy. You don't buy the dream. I understand. It's no, but okay, that's the but... thing. That, but like, when I ask you what the dream is, you're not really telling it to me. You're like, it's gonna, like, it's kind of like this thing that's, that's gonna the thing grow. Is I, don't believe, like I don't believe in the dream. Freedom. I don't believe in in saying what Bitcoin should be or. <laughs> but what I do you just, think is gonna like? Do you like? When, I, I when are you gonna be satisfied? Does. When Bitcoin's at hundred thousand dollars? I'm not gonna be satisfied. I only want to live on Bitcoin. So, so that's the that's how you. Like, what's gonna satisfy you? Like all your transactions. Are, all your transactions are in Bitcoin, and then how much is Bitcoin worth? That's what I need to know. I need to know these things, John. You gotta tell me. Why how much you, is it worth? Because I need to know, I like, want what it. the fuck is this? What the fuck are people smoking? Like, what do you think? I don't, I'm not getting this. I'm, 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 <laughs> I'm, I'm, getting com this I'm completely happy with the fact that it's... I want to be it's like worth. you. I want to be fucking as one of you guys. As, as long as Bitcoin continues to appreciate in value <laughs> on a roughly three-year schedule, um, you know, or, or more... Uh, you know, if you include dips and such or downturns, I'll be happy. You know, I, I'm going to be dead, you know, in 60 years or whatever or less. So, so you I really give care. a shit what I happens to Bitcoin so after much. you die? You really think like... I mean, I'm, I, I don't want to do bad things to Bitcoin, but no, obviously the context of my life is limited. <laughs> so as long, uh, long as you're have, making money have, on it, it's good. After that time, I don't know, fuck Bitcoin. If I Bitcoin. have kids or, you know, if I have kids, nephews or whatever, different point of view but at the moment i don't so okay so like really the whole world could go fuck itself as long as you get your bitcoin fucking i mean empire. this is a different conversation no but like know, i'm right? just like i want to know <laughs> but no but seriously like i need to know what's going on with like what what's like what are we doing here i need to know like what are people thinking about bitcoin because i need to know I really, what, I, like, why right, am so i wrong me, about this i'll get more philosophical or more or more idealistic for me like i really have a problem with being restricted with with having limitations put on me and i always whenever i have to interface with banks or governments or whatever all these things just I start sweating 
They make me feel <laughs> constricted, and they make me. And because I have no, I have no like voice in being able to communicate, you know, or improve the way these things work. I, I feel completely disillusioned with my ability to interface with the government and it matter. Uh, I, I, it's very hard for me to not feel like I'm just in some arbitrary cage. So if I can remove, if I can have money be something that they can't fuck with, and I really don't like the concept of them inflating things and taking value away and forcing me to like have a risk if I want to save money. Um, I don't like that system, you know? And so Bitcoin really answers a lot of the questions. It doesn't feel right to me to just hold stocks and watch them go higher and higher and higher because people have nowhere else to put their money. Like it feels stupid to me and I, I don't like it. And I want to be able to put my money in a place where I think there's actual potential, where there's actual utility and there's something uh, is actually offering a competitive, you know, unique proposition compared to what the alternatives are like, like US dollars or, you know, stuff like that. So for me, it, it's it's about, I guess in a way, it's about freedom. It's about being able to have control over the things, my own value. Because to me, 100%, it's just like, oh, I can make fucking money on my computer? <laughs> Great. <laughs> I mean, I had a mining farm too, you know, when, when I was first into this and I had my fun and I had a garage full of like 12 GPUs and it was like, you know, 90 degrees in there and I all extra circuits and you know dealt with all kinds of shit um but then it went to 40 bucks and i said fuck i'm set i'm out <laughs> and then i i sold the gpus i gave some away and summer's collecting dust damn but that's what i'm saying though like technically those gpus still have value if you really wanted to you could have been mining fucking ethereum this whole time you've you had like four times your investment probably on bitcoin well but i also would have you know i've been mobile and I didn't have a place to be doing this shit. And it's true that, true that I have, you know, I only have so much time in a day. And I think my own personal time is worth more than that of a GPU. Um, so, well, I, I mean, I think, I time. think the argument is that is it though? Because like, if you were, if you spent your entire, your mining last year, your, your investment would have went up, you know, uh, 20 times. Um, if I had bought Bitcoin with that instead, I probably still would have made more money. I don't know. So we gotta, we, I, we, I want to run the numbers on this. Spent, if we got to figure spent, this shit say, out. If I started a small GPU farm, I don't know, say five, ten grand, um, six months ago, the price has gone up thousands of dollars, man. True, but like, there's also less risk in a G in buying a GPU than buying Bitcoin. I'm like, just saying, but, but but now we have the benefit of hindsight. We know it would have been a bad decision, right? For what? For to, what? To open a GPU farm that, you know, that if six months ago, 12 months ago, maybe even three months ago, Instead of buying just buying Bitcoin, you would have fa you would have failed. You know, you would have lost money. You would have been more if you just bought Bitcoin. Let's see. So, if you bought three months ago, how much was it three months ago? I don't know, man. I mean, this is all. This is just more. It really depends. How, I mean, yeah, but I mean, it I mean, like, let's run the numbers real quickly. So, let's say if you bought like three thousand dollars worth of Bitcoin, right? You bought one Bitcoin. It was it was. Three thousand dollars, let's say, and let's say like right now it's seven. Let's just say it's six thousand dollars, just to be easy numbers, okay? Uh, hold on, no. Let's say the real numbers. So I, we well, can, let's just take it like two months. No point. To, I, we already did a fake. I'm I'm gonna use I'm gonna, okay, whatever. I'm not. Uh, if you spent three thousand dollars in Bitcoin six months ago, and you spent three thousand dollars on your GPUs, right? So let you would get probably about twelve GPUs for three thousand dollars. Let's see, three thousand dollars divided by six. By our wealth. The price right. was four thousand three months ago. Okay, so it's less than half. So it's gone up three thousand dollars. Okay, so that's dollars worse for your argument. Yeah. My 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 argument is that so if you bought a four thousand so let's just say it's you you made your investment we'll go back to what I said. Let's do three thousand six thousand just for easy numbers. So you made twice your investment basically, right? If I spent three thousand dollars on graphics cards and I was mining every day with them, I'd probably be making four and uh probably between three and six dollars a piece on them uh so what i say 12 so 12 times that's like 50 bucks a day times four months minus electricity costs minus hardware costs well the hardware costs also get uh kind of you also have a resale value that's why i'm saying yeah, it's less you, risky okay so also, also electricity doing, costs you're also doing the absolute most gru grueling thing to that card to reduce its lifespan it's really not that bad. 
It's pretty bad. It's and, really not. And you can fuck up, and you can get. It's really you can, not. You can, you can short you're, you're your using, card. You're using a you graphics card, card for exactly what it's supposed you to be used for. If you One look at server key. class hardware, that's exactly. They never turn those shits off. That it's a fucking computer. Saying, they, they're meant they're to not ex, catch on fire. To running this shit. You have to watch they're, over it. The you safety precautions. The safety precautions of a mining <laughs> of a mining GPU from AMD is going to be way less uh, of a necessity than the shit I get from fucking China. My fucking but Dogecoin way, miner, my fucking Zeus X6, buying, 45 megahertz, mega hashes. Way more than buying and holding Bitcoin. I, well, that's what I'm running right now. So hold on. Wait a second. Yeah. So wait, $50 a day. So let's just say even less than that. So let's say we're making only... I think, I, I, I think you're cheesing the numbers way too much. The well, not really, because I don't. It was four thousand and went to seven thousand. That's a three. I'm giving you benefit. I'm giving you the benefit of the doubt here. I'm saying but, that you went from three thousand to six thousand. I'm only no, talking no, about you're also, doubling you're your also, investment. I'm talking about much, doubling your investment in four months. How many cards are you? We're talking about twelve that, graphics that, cards. Twelve graphics you're cards not gonna, for three thousand. No you, you need. You know, you can't do that for three thousand. Not even close. Uh, so need, that's what I'm saying. Need, if you're making fifty dollars a day. Motherboards. You need. No. You just. Well, you want. Fine. So let's say ten graphics cards. No, probably more like six. What, dude, bro? Dude, how much are the graphic cards? If you do it, it's, it's, I was doing it six hundred dollars per per card, so three thousand divided need, by six. And, I, and how many? Or five hundred. Sorry, three thousand divided by five. For motherboard, and what are you going to spend on the motherboards? Oh, dude, I the don't know math, dude. What am I fucking about, doing here? Hold on. Oh, you know, I, you know that these need at least thousand watt well, power I, supplies. Don't make right? me do math. Hold on. Let me just do this. Divided by. <laughs> You need to, you'd actually need it's six. Need really I'm sorry. You're right. You're right. You're right. Yeah, 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 yeah. So you're not going to get anywhere expensive. near the profit. You, it, it, I, I did it before. It's expensive. Um, and it, and if you do, luck I'm not out saying, right I just want to run the numbers. I'm not saying that I'm necessarily right. I just want to run the yeah. numbers though, before we start making these like crazy it's claims. It's silly. So like, six. So it's half that. So let's you're say you're saying, making $20 a day times four. So hold on. So let's just say $20 a day. Cause that acts for six graphics cards. That's not unrealistic at all. Six, $20 a day. On six graphics cards times four months, so 30 times four times six, you're making $720. And also, you still have, let's say, 2000 of that $3,000 you spent on the, on the graphics cards. You, you, did you subtract electricity? Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm putting it at $20 a day as opposed to like 30 or whatever. I'm, I'm cutting yeah, it down. I, I, I mean, I don't know. You know. I think if you did the actual math, you'd come out way behind. Because Let's, you're uh, saying I'll go to what's right now. Hold on. Because you're saying, what if I do? What if I buy bitcoins, but I add expense? No, no. Or what no, if I just buy no, bitcoins? No, 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 no. This That's... is what it amounts to. No, 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 no. You're, you're saying you're you're saying I would rather mine enough bitcoin to equal the three thousand dollar gap than buy the bitcoin. Well, one, you don't know that the, the price is going to go up. So all I'm saying is that when you mine There's GPUs, no way you can listen, win. listen, listen, listen. Like, no listen, listen, listen. Look, don't get carried away. All I'm saying is that. <laughs> There's less of a risk in buying a GPU. As if you think that the price is going to stay stable, there's less of a price in uh, less of a risk in buying a GPU. Yes, Bitcoin went up in the past four months. You know, whatever the fuck went up, but it didn't always do that. Yeah, but on a time scale of, of any length, you're going to find that it's going to be hard to compete you with the appreciation. You, of you can't have the same argument throughout all of its history. It's all, not. You know I mean? Oh shit, Monero fucking jumped today. Whoa, hey yep. guys. Hey, what's going on, everybody? Hey, hey, hey. How you doing? MoneroApparel.com. Don't forget, guys. Check that shit out. It's hot, hot fire threads. <laughs> uh, I should be fishing right now. How damn, long have we been on? We've been on for like an hour or so, or at least two hours. An hour and a half. Oh, shit. Yeah. Uh, we've been live for one hour and 38 I minutes and 43 seconds. We can wrap it up if you want. I mean, I, I feel like we got we got. I didn't ask a lot of things I want to ask you about because I I still have to like clarify on like the minute things of Bitcoin. Yeah, well, I think now. I mean, we talk somewhat regularly, so I think now yeah. we can we can start making notes. We can start talking about how to make it interesting. Never play you know, this game again. A, we've we've learned a very valuable thing today, which is make sure we've actually played the game together the before game we try to second. stream it. <laughs> we try to fucking load it up. <laughs> because it took me like, you know, I like this game. This is like, if you were like fish right now, that. man, dude, you catching some bass, dude? What I'm catching mean? fish. I just got to go and I got to upgrade my shit and all that. Yeah, but I, I would like to play something. I would like to find cause us to have funny interactions. We know, should like, have like a Monopoly night more or something. More player versus player or something. I don't know. Any type of like turn-based game would be good or... It's, it's really hard to have good conversation with too much attention so yeah like we're not playing yeah, it's dota it's gonna be a little bit, little bit mindless 
Although I'm kind of down for a game of Dota after this. I don't know if you're trying to do that, but yeah. <laughs> Actually, yeah, we can yeah, play. We, we can, can play, play right now if you want to. I mean, we could, but I'm not gonna be able to talk anymore. Like, I'm just gonna have to turn this shit off. Uh, or just like we can shut off the stream. All right, let's let's close up the stream. Is there anything else you want to talk about right nah, now? No, no, I We're think good. it's a good time to wrap it. up Thanks everybody for listening. Really um, appreciate it, guys. This will be on YouTube. It'll be we'll, I'll make a podcast version for people that want the audio. And the next show, I promise, will be better. And bit be by prepared. bit, I hope I hope you enjoyed some of the conversation. Episode yet. one, season one, volume one, All XXL. Right, Peace out, guys. Oh, well, that's not working. Okay, bye, everybody.